I wanted to uh, do one thing on this agenda in addition to welcoming everyone, and that is to introduce uh, Dr. Bob Salas. Now, Dr. Salas has been the uh, medical leader at Kaiser Permanente who has taught our entire medical group the science and the practice and the medical benefits of walking. Dr. Salas is a true believer. He's an advocate. He's a zealot. He's a leader. He's a teacher. Uh, he has managed to get um, walking into our electronic medical records, so we actually have activity levels. We have nine million people who have electronic medical records and we actually have in the medical record activity levels. And it's the only electronic database in the world that large. Uh, Dr. Salas was the inspiration for that and the advocate that, that caused that to happen. He was the pioneer of the walking prescription pads that we use across Kaiser Permanente. He's been a leader with the, the medical group. And, and last year in the Rose Bowl parade, when you looked at the Kaiser Permanente float, it was doctors walking instead of having a motorized. So Dr. Salas is a champion of walking. He's one of my heroes, and it's a great pleasure to invite him to the microphone. You know, George Halverson is certainly among the most respected healthcare leaders in the world. And when he tells you that walking is something that is good for health and healthcare, I think we really have to listen. You know, I was... Uh, considering the idea of walking as a drug, and I was thinking about the physician's desk reference, it's the largest compendium of drugs that exists in the world. It lists virtually every medication that's available for healthcare practitioners to prescribe to patients. Now, walking is not in there, but if there were a drug called walking, I would submit you'd have a hard time finding one that is more powerful. Now, walking is the generic name for a drug called physical activity. There are lots of other brand names for this drug, jogging, hiking, rolling if you're in a wheelchair, things like swimming, aerobics, biking, tennis, basketball, soccer, dancing, even gardening are other formulations generic, of the generic drug physical activity. We know the dosage very clearly of this drug called walking. The optimal dose is 150 minutes per week in adults, 60 minutes a day in kids, been proven with multiple studies to have tremendous efficacy. But the interesting part about this drug called walking is that even at very low doses, short amounts have a profound effect. And you like to start this drug out at a low dose and gradually advance it as tolerated. I can think of only a handful of medications that we actually recommend for pregnant or lactating women. It's completely safe, other than perhaps prenatal vitamins. This is the one drug you'd really want to be on if you become pregnant, and we'd actually want to start it once we knew you were pregnant. Now, there is a vast array of indications and usage for this drug called walking. Uh, the, the research has been dramatic in its ability to decrease premature death, to lower all cause, and particularly cardiovascular-related mortality rates. It's been shown to reduce the development and improve the management of diabetes can treat high blood pressure, very helpful in managing anxiety and depression, can prevent osteoporosis, more importantly, prevent fractures caused by this low bone density, can reduce the risk of dementia. It can help prevent and, more importantly, mitigate the harmful effects of obesity. So it's got a wide variety of indications and uses. Now, the side effect profile of this drug called walking is interesting. It actually almost immediately begins to decrease your blood pressure lower your pulse, your blood sugar. It leads to stronger muscles and bones and can cause you to lose weight. Its most powerful effect, perhaps, is on the brain, where it will improve your mood, confidence, self-esteem, concentration. Your bowel and sleep habits become better when you walk each day. And you actually look and feel better when you take this drug called walking. Now, there are some adverse of, of reactions to this drug on occasion. If you take large amounts, you may, may begin to sweat. Injuries can occur. Usually when you take too much of the drug too fast, you don't ramp up the dosage. We call these overuse uh, injuries. Now, there are potential for sudden death while taking this drug. That's very rare. But what you have to know is when you take this drug let, regularly, you dramatically lower the chance of sudden death. 
The administration, we, you can self-administer it. You can, do it. you can take this drug with others. Often makes it more enjoyable. You can consider it a recreational drug. <laughs> you like to start off slowly and increase the minutes and intensity as needed to achieve the desired effects. And I would recommend that you change formulations of this drug. It doesn't always have to be in the formulation of walking. This helps you decrease boredom with, with taking this drug, and it helps improve compliance. You can take it indoors or outdoors any time of the day. Now, we have a well-established dose response curve to this drug. And what's very interesting is that the most powerful effect is when you just begin to take it. When you have somebody who is completely naive to the drug, who's sedentary, and they begin taking the drug, you get a dramatic effect. Now, to be sure, taking larger than the 150 minutes per week recommended dose, you get more benefit, but the curve starts to flatten out. The folks we really want to start on this drug are the ones who are not taking it at all. We want to at least get them on a low dose. So it is very clear to me that walking is a wonder drug that physicians should prescribe, that patients should take. This is the long sought after vaccine to prevent chronic disease and extend life. And could you imagine if we had a pill, if there were another drug that looked like what I just described in the PDR, this would be the most prescribed drug in the world. It wouldn't matter what it costs, we would insist that everybody had access to a drug that was this powerful. That's what we've got to happen, we've got to see happen with walking. And in fact, this was backed up just last summer when the journal Lancet released an entire issue of the journal dedicated to the power of physical activity and walking to improve health. Now the concluding statement from that issue was that in view of the prevalence, global reach, and health effect of physical inactivity, the issue should be appropriately described as pandemic with far-reaching health, economic, environmental, and social consequences. Now could you imagine if a journal as prestigious as the Lancet released a statement about an infectious disease that they described as pandemic with these consequences we would be all over this in organized medicine. We would do whatever it took to stop a pandemic of this magnitude. Why are we not doing the same with the inactivity epidemic? Now, beyond the health effects of walking, I think the most powerful benefit is on a person's functional capacity. If you plot a person's functional capacity, the ability to do the things they want to do each day, if you plot that against their age, you get something we call the geriatric curve. Now this is the geriatric curve of somebody who follows a high-risk lifestyle, who's inactive, who smokes, who follows a poor diet. What you see is that very predictably, these people begin to suffer prematurely from chronic diseases that impair their functional capacity. And so at a very young age, a relatively young age, they enter into a stage we would call deficient survival. These are patients who are alive but not really living. These are folks who are confined to wheelchairs, to nursing homes that cost a lot of money to care for. Now contrast the geriatric curve of somebody who follows that high-risk lifestyle with a person who follows a low-risk lifestyle. You see a squaring off of the geriatric curve. That is somebody who's a walker, who doesn't smoke. They maintain a very high functional capacity almost right until the end. There is no reason at 50 you shouldn't be doing exactly what you're 30. Even at 70, you ought to be doing all of those same, same things. And we see this day in and day out. Folks who age very gracefully, who maintain a high functional capacity, the way to do that is to walk every day, to follow a low-risk lifestyle. 